Let's talk about securing data in Amazon S3 storage using tooling beyond the standard bucket and IAM policies. So what we're really going to talk about here is VPC endpoints and S3 access points. So I have this pretty picture here, which is kind of going to be our end state. And I'll talk about it a little bit later. It also exists here because on a blog article, the first image becomes the image for the blog and all the summaries. So this was a nice pretty picture for that. So really, if we were to look at how S3 is actually protected today, what you can either use is you can use bucket policies or you can use IAM policies, right? So the bucket policies sit on the bucket and describe what's allowed to connect to the bucket. The IAM policies sit on resources like people groups or other things. There's one other. Um, and it basically tells you what resource that role or user has to get access to Amazon services. So it's interesting. It's actually sort of the same thing, but different. It's sort of looking at it from a different angle. Do you want to apply your security on the storage device itself, or do you want to give permissions to an entity? So one of them is giving permissions to the entity, and the other one is the access control policy on the resource itself. Those are the two ways you can do that today. The real problem with those is they get gigantic. If you have a bucket with more than a few things in it, and you get a moderately sized organization, those were very squishy terms, um, what will happen is your bucket policies become gigantic. You can put the resource restrictions. So in this case, we could tell configure this bucket to only let this IAM role connect to it. If you have lots of IAM roles with lots of uh, accounts that are VPCs, that can be really complicated. Um, you can also tie it to a VPC. So you could say, hey, this bucket's accessible from this VPC. Uh, on the other side is the compute. Like I said, you can tie a user role or IAM role, right? You can be a user or a role. Um, and you can actually put it on those. So you can say this EC2 instance with this role has access to these N buckets. So when you look at what the true bucket protection policy is, you got to do a union cross product thing of the policies that are implemented on the bucket and the policies that are interested in all the IAM resources. So a lot of people will try and stick with one. They'll put all the permissions on the bucket or they'll put all the permissions on the role so that they can figure out what's actually happening. The downside is those are really limited. The size and the complexity of a bucket policy can get really out of hand. It is really hard to audit that when you have a fair number of clients coming after it uh, or you have a fair number of buckets that different roles or, or resource, AWS resources right on the IAM side. So a lot of times that tend can be pretty hard. So, so that's where you run out of gas. It's just hard to audit and you run out of space. A lot of teams will end up in this situation. Well, I don't know about a lot, but every place I've ever worked this had it. One of the things Amazon introduced was these notion of access points. So one of the problems also with buckets, it's there are global namespace space, right? And it is not obvious where that bucket is actually located when you get the URL, the ARN for it. So they came up with these things called access points, and they explicitly tell you which region and account that access point is in. You, it makes it easier to audit from like a human point of view. Um, the other thing access points do is they let you subset the bucket. So you can say this access point is a front for this bucket, but only resources on this wild card. So the one, the example I did here was inord and inord and org and xorg. So you could have like different business units, and you might want to restrict part of the bucket for one, all the users in one business unit, and you might want to restrict or give access to another part of the bucket to another group of users. And there might be a whole bunch of those different user sets in each of those, in org and out org. And so you might run out of bucket policy. In this case, what you can do with S3 access points, which aren't really in your account at all, you basically get a DNS address and you can declare that this one's for in org and then all your policies related to you, to, um, who gets access to that part, that subset of the bucket, where people who are inside the org would actually be in that access point, and all the policies related to users um, that, and who's allowed to access another part of the bucket, or maybe the whole bucket, would be in the X org. So there's two things you can do here. You can add as many access points as you want on an S3 bucket, and that gives you a way to divide up where the uh, policy definitions are done. They can be done on the access point in the button side of the bucket. Um, and the bucket itself can be set up so that you can, it can only be talked to through access points, right? So you can do a very simple policy on the bucket and use the other policy space for a life cycle or whatever else you want. 
and then you can push out and segregate the access controls either based on prefix inside of the bucket based on pattern matching or or you could do it for some, on some other way, right? Like it could be the whole bucket that's on a couple access points or it could be different parts of the bucket or overlapping parts of the bucket that are on each, each access point. So this is a really a good way to break out the access controls for your bucket. So you can be very explicit about knowing that this compute entity is gonna connect to this region in this account and get into this bucket. What I want to talk about is the other thing. So that's access points. Access points are really cool. They sit in front of the bucket and they give you uh, a scoped down address and they give you a ability to add additional uh, controls, right? Additional policies. The other thing, and this is actually a version of this has been around for a while and it's S3 gateway endpoints are been around for a while. They're going to be coming out with or have come out with by the time you've seen this interface endpoints. An S3 endpoint is basically a way to put a sort of like a reverse proxy inside your VPC so that the traffic between your compute and the tra and the bucket itself actually stays on Amazon's private network and doesn't use the global endpoints. Like I've worked a couple places now where gateway, I'm sorry, S3 endpoints are required to access any of the buckets and it's because we didn't want any of our traffic to go across the public infrastructure. We wanted it all to say on private compute. So if you have a bucket that has sensitive data in it and you don't want to transit the internet and you don't want to hit the public endpoints, even though the trans the uh, in transit is encrypted, you can use an S3 endpoint. You basically stand up that endpoint. They have a DNS routing set up. It's basically like, basically they put an ENI in your VPC and they give it a name. And then your compute connects to that S3 endpoint. And that S3 endpoint forwards all the operations to the bucket. It turns out this is good for policies too. You can actually configure a bucket. We actually do this where I, one of the places I work now or before. All of our buckets can only be connected to by VPC endpoints. And what that means is there are no routing errors that could let data from that bucket leave our site, right? Because if you're not, our VPC endpoints are only visible from inside our VPCs. If we're on an external subnet or some random VPC, in our network and you try and get access to the bucket, even if you have an IAM role and there's a security hole, it won't actually work because you gotta be inside one of our VPCs that's allowed to have access to that bucket. That bucket could even be in the same account. And if you do that, it means the bucket can't be seen by anywhere outside your account. So I drew it like this with two accounts, but it doesn't have to be that way. So in this case, I have a bucket. It's actually protected only for like, a, it only allows get operations and it only allows it from a VPC endpoint, a list of VPC endpoints. The other, and the VPC endpoint itself is restricted to only allow traffic from inside the VPC. It seems redundant. You could put VPC on the S3 bucket, but this lets you route the traffic on your internal network and create policies where data in buckets can only be seen from your networks and the traffic is private, okay? So those are the, those are the two things, right? We had S3 access points, and we have VPC endpoints and they have two different uses. So the last case, I'm just gonna show an example. Um, if you, let's say you wanted to share data between two parts of your organization that don't get along well or they're separate or between two different companies. You can actually combine these things. So I'm gonna say here that we really didn't want this. We don't want a global endpoint. We want all the traffic to stay inside of our, the Amazon internal network and we have different parts of this bucket that we want to be visible to two different accounts. And they either could be in our org or not. We, we might be able to want to do private trusted connection with a different org, but they might be in different divisions, right? In this case here, what I did is I created an S3 access point, two of them for two different subsets of this bucket. And one of those access points is only visible from this VPC endpoint. And the reason we did the VPC endpoint is to run on the private network. And then this compute, the only, and, and the only entities allowed to connect to this VPC endpoint are compute inside that VPC. We've restricted the access, we've kept it on the private network, and we've distributed the policies where policies that are related to each other on that bucket for different parts of the organization or different applications can be co-located without exceeding the bucket policy match. Uh, you can actually find this, all of this, um, at kind of what I just said on my blog and in this video. I hope this 
Oh, it's so long. I hope I was hoping to make this shorter, but I I hope this helps.